Hello and welcome back. I'm Joseph Hoffman. Today we're learning a traditional song that comes from Canada. It's called I Hear the Mill Wheel. What is a mill wheel? Oh, oh, I know. You do? Great. Go ahead and explain it for us, princess. A mill is a place where you grind wheat into flour. So a mill wheel is a large wheel attached on the outside of the mill that is partially submerged in a river or stream. And then the water from the river pushes and turns the wheel. That's right. The spinning wheel makes an axle spin, making gears turn and giving power to the grinding machine inside the mill. The big stone wheels grind away and out comes flour. Flour for making bread, cakes, or cookies. That's right. Thanks for such a clear explanation of what a mill wheel is. Now, let's listen to I Hear the Mill Wheel. Will you guys help me sing it? You sure bet. Thing. I hear the mill wheel tick a tick a tock a. I hear the mill wheel turn. I hear the mill wheel tick a tick a tock a. I hear the mill wheel turn. Tick a tick a tock a. Tick a tick a tock a. Tick a tock a. I hear the mill wheel tick a tick a tock a. I hear the mill wheel turn. Here I have written the beginning of the rhythm for I Hear the Mill Wheel. You might recognize this rhythm, T ticky. I hear the mill wheel, T ticky, T T. Remember, this is an eighth note with two sixteenth notes. One beam is what we see for eighth notes. When we have these two beams, they're sixteenth notes. So these two notes go twice as fast as eighth notes, T ticky. Say it with me, T ticky. All together we get T ticky T T. Say it with me, go. T ticky T T. Now I'd like you to try and figure out what is happening in these two beats. Here it goes. Ba 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 ba. What did you hear? Listen one more time. Ba 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 ba. What did you hear in this beat? If you said ticky ticky, you're correct. There were four sounds in this beat. The only way you can fit four sounds in a beat is to go this fast. Ba 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 ba. And then what did you hear in this beat? Ba 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 ba. If you said eighth notes, you're correct. Let's say it all together. Say the rhythm words with me as we point to each beat. Go. T ticky t t ticky ticky t t. Now, can you help me figure out these beats? Let's just do these two. We have ba 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 ba. What did you hear? The correct answer is t ticky t t. It's the same rhythm we had up here. T ticky t t. Now, can you figure out the rest? Listen. Ba 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 ba. Ba ba. What did you hear? If you said two quarter notes, you're correct. Remember, a quarter note fills up an entire beat. T ticky t t ta ta. Can you sing the whole thing with me from the start? Point with me, go. T ticky t t ticky ticky t t t ticky t t ta ta. Great job. Let's check out the sheet music. Here's the score for I Hear the Mill Wheel. Today let's play a little hunting game. I'm going to name some different things from music and see if you can find it on the score and point to it for me. Can you point to a forte symbol? If you're pointing right here, you're correct. Remember, forte means to play loudly with strength. Can you point to a slur? A slur is a symbol we've learned recently, a curved line that connects two or more notes of different pitches. Like here's a slur, you could have pointed here or here. Anytime you have a curved line connecting different notes, that's a slur. Can you point to any notes that are staccato? A staccato is a note that has a dot under the note head or over the note head like this. These are all staccatos or staccati, <laughs> as I think they say. 
can you point to the time signature for me? If you're pointing right here to that 2-4, you're correct. I like to circle that top number because that reminds me how many beats are in every measure. Can you point to any flat symbols? There are lots of them. You could be pointing here, 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 here. Any of these little symbols are the flats that tell you which notes to make flat. Remember, we're doing black key pentascales these days, so there's always going to be lots of flats or sharps. Now remember, the sheet music is available from our website, so I encourage you to download and print out a copy for yourself that you can use in your practicing. Now let's notice something interesting about the rhythms. You see we've got our T, ticky, T, T, ticky, ticky, T, T. See how the melody drops down into the bass clef here? We start up, up in treble clef, the melody's in the right hand, but then here the left hand's going to help out with the melody. Sometimes that's called passing the melody between the hands. Like in a relay race where you pass a baton and now someone else is in charge of running, you can pass the baton, so to speak, between the hands. The right hand plays, I hear the mill wheel ticka ticka. The left hand takes over right there, then passes the baton back to the right hand. Taka, I hear the mill wheel turning. Here, the left hand also helps out with tur, and then ning is the right hand. So to know which hand to play, just follow the notes. If you're up on the top staff, it's right hand. When it dips down to the, the bass staff, then it's left hand. Can you tell me the letter name for this first note? If you said G flat, you're correct. Now, can you name the rest of the notes in this measure? Name them all. G flat, now keep going yourself. The correct answer is G flat, F, G flat. Now let's pause. Why is this a G flat? It looks just like a G, right? No. Hopefully you remembered that the law of flats uh, is, the law is, the law is that if you have a flat in front of a certain note of a certain pitch, that flat lives for the whole measure up until the bar line. So any other G's on this same line also get flat. Once you see that flat, he lives all the way to the bar line. Now let's keep going. This is E flat, and what would this be? If you said E flat, you're correct. It looks just like an E, but that flat is still alive up into the bar line. Once you hit a bar line, then you have to draw the flat all over again. Let's come to the piano and try to play this. Here we have the E flat minor pentascale. Can you point and name each note for me? Try it. E flat, keep going on your own. If you said E flat, F, G flat, A flat, B flat, you're correct. Since the melody passes between both hands, let's go ahead and place both hands in the E flat minor pentascale and try to play. Do, re, me, fa, so. Your turn. Play and sing. Now let's take a look at this first measure. Remember, in the right hand we have T, ticky, T, T. We start with finger three on G flat. T, ticky. Now your turn. Now you might have noticed this symbol down in the bass staff. This rectangle, that is called a whole rest. When you see a whole rest, it means to be silent for the whole measure. It doesn't matter what time signature you are in. A whole rest means the entire measure you get to rest. So our left hand has nothing to do. Also notice in the right hand, we have a slur over the first four notes, and then as we get to that fourth note, we have a staccato, staccato. Remember, when you do a staccato, you want to do a little wrist lift, like this. So it has a nice light and quick sound. You don't want to stab at it like this and have your fingers go flying. Keep your fingers close to the keys and just a little quick lift. T, ticky, T, T. Now your turn. Now in the next measure, tell me the letter name that you see that the left hand plays. If you said B flat, you're correct. And how many B flats? That's right, there are four. We've got 16th notes, we've got ticky, ticky, and they're also staccato, ticky, ticky. 
Now remember, with these, also you want to keep your wrist really loose, ticky, ticky, and just kind of bounce it, ticky, ticky. Fingers close to the keys, you've got to have a loose, floppy wrist, or you can get really tense, and it will give you an ugly sound too, ticky, ticky. Now your turn. Ticka, ticka. Try it again. Now in the next beat, the right hand comes back up to E flat. Ta, ka. So the whole measure is ticka, ticka, ta, ka. Now you try. Let's put that together. We have I hear the mill wheel. Ticka, ticka, ta, ka. Your turn. Now, take a look at the next two measures, and I'd like you to read the notes, pause the video, and try to figure it out on your own, measures three and four, and then press play, and we'll try it together. You might have noticed that measure three is the same notes as measure one. So we have I hear the mill wheel. Now here we get something different. The left hand plays B flat for a quarter note, then the right hand plays E flat for a quarter note. And what's this curved line? That's our slur, which means to play legato. Turning all together. I hear the mill wheel turning. Your turn. Let's put all of line one together now. I hear the mill wheel tick a tick. Pause the video and practice all of line one several times until you feel confident, then press play to go on. Now, I'd like you to take a look at line two, look at these notes carefully, and tell me, is this the same as line one or different? If you think it's the same, is every single note the same? Sometimes, remember, composers might change just one note. So check carefully and tell me if, if there's anything that changes. The correct answer is that there are no changes. We have a forte up on this first line, but remember in dynamics, you continue at the same dynamic until you get something new. So the second line is also considered forte. So great, we already know line two. I hear the mill wheel tick a tick a tock a. I hear the mill wheel turning. Now let's take a look at line three. What do you notice? Wow, this line is different. So if we're going to think of the form of this piece, we could call line one A, line two A, line three is different, so we'll call it B. And then what should we call line four? Take a look. If you said A, you're correct. So the form of I hear the mill wheel is A, A, B, A. Now we're going to learn the B section in our next lesson. So for now, I'd like you to work on this A section. Make sure you're doing a great job with your staccatos with a nice flexible wrist, the little quick wrist lift, staying really relaxed, ticka, ticka, ticka. Whoops, ticka, ticka. Practice that A section, and then in our next lesson, we'll tackle the B section. Great job today learning the A section of I Hear the Mill Wheel. Thanks for watching and learning with me, and see you next time. Time to cook a little breakfast. I cook the pancakes, flip-a, flip-a, flop-a, time for breakfast. <laughs>